Hi, my name is Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that have maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I've had a car that lasts over 400,000 miles. The current car that I'm driving has over 220,000 miles on it. It's a 95 model. So I hope you can benefit from the information I share. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do a timing belt on a Volvo S70. Uh, the first thing you want to do before you do these timing belts is you want to check the water pump uh, see if it's leaking or not. I normally do the water pump every other change. Uh, some people do it every change. It's always safe to change everything you can when you do these things. I do not do cam seals, uh, especially if I know that the PVC system is good, unless I see any evidence of a uh, oil leak. So I'm going to go ahead and on this car, I'm going to do the timing belt, the tensioner roller, the idler roller, and uh, and I'm not going to do the water pump. I'm also going to do the tensioner. It's a hydraulic tensioner, and I have no idea how old this one is. So uh, normally the tensioners don't go bad, but I like to have all parts on deck. So it would be even good to have a water pump, especially if you plan on keeping a car for a while. Uh, one thing that you want to do is make sure that you have necessary tools. You need a good torque uh, bit. T45, don't use any junk. Those things just cause problems. Also use a uh, special tool that I actually had manufactured to take the tension off the tensioner belt uh, tensioner. It's a, I think it's an 18 millimeter uh, square. Some people use plumbing fittings and stuff like that. I think uh, 11 32 will also be good. Then I have a little screw that I use to hold that tensioner up and out of the way. Uh, I use it as a pin to hold that tensioner up. So make sure you have a good torque bit, make sure you have all parts on deck, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Here's the tools and equipment you'll need to do the timing belt job on this uh, Volvo 850 S60. You'll need a jack, jack stand, the parts, uh, I use that half inch breaker bar extensions and 30 millimeter socket to roll the motor over to align the timing. I got the snips to cut the uh, timing belt loose. I got my torque T45 for the tensioner roller. I got 12 and 10 millimeter 3 8 inch ratchet 12 and, mil and 12 and 10 millimeter quarter inch ratchet. I got a magnet to pick up things that drop. I got the crescent wrench, I got an 18 or 19 millimeter box in wrench, have a little breaker bar, and I got my anti-seas for my lug nuts, then I got a T25 and a T30 torque uh, hand screwdriver. So those are all the tools you should need. Oh, I forgot to mention my serpentine belt, little yellow tool and pin there. Okay, before I jack the car up, the opposite side, you want to put a piece of wood to uh, set the wheel so hopefully it don't roll. Something bigger would be better. I set the parking brake. I pulled the parking brake slowly. The parking brake system on these cars are a little sensitive, so you don't want to jerk that cable around. You don't want to break it. I've already broke those lug nuts loose, and I jacked the car up slowly. So when you jack the car up, the front and the back tire will come off the ground. Now I'm going to pull those lug nuts off and I'm going to set a jack stand under there for safety. Okay, I lowered the jack on the jack stand. That's where I position the jack stand. Okay, normally these hoods open up at about a 45, 50 degree angle. If you want to get the hood up a little higher, what you want to do is come in here, flip these tabs down on both sides, one on this side, one on the other side, and then you can raise the hood up to a 90 degree angle. I'm not going to go up that high because I don't want to hit the garage door, but it does give me some more space to work in the motor without bumping my head. Next thing you want to do is get the coolant bottle out of the way. The coolant bottle has a little latch right there. You poke that in with a screwdriver, lift the bottle up and out of the way, 
and it has a little wire connection uh, on the bottom of the on the bottom of the bottle for the low light sensor. You may have to disconnect that. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is take the serpentine belt off. So I'm gonna grab my tool right here, slide it in this square in the serpentine belt pulley. Fits right in there like that. Then I'm gonna have this thing ready to slide in when I take the tension off of it. I'm gonna slide it through the pulley and lock the pulley back and release. Okay, you could use an 18 or 19 millimeter uh, box in wrench on that. As you can see, the uh, tensioner is pulled back and locked in a release position. Now I'm going to take the belt off. Now you want to make a special note of how these belts route on there. They take a big turn down there at the idler pulley and circle up around the alternator. A lot of people forget to make that loop, but you need to make sure you get that belt back on right. And the easiest place to get it off is just to push it off of that idler pulley down there, uh, which is right here, is the idler pulley. So pull it off of that, and that's the last place you want to put it on when you put it back on. And uh, take the belt off, and then take the uh, two bolts out of this idler pulley. You got one 12 millimeter bolt here, and one 12 millimeter bolt down there a little bit right behind uh, at the bottom of the bracket. Next thing you want to do is remove the timing belt cover. If you look down here, you have a, a little hole there, a notch you can feel the, the screw for the timing belt cover. It's either a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter. Normally it's a 12, but I think on this car it's a 10. So I'm going to go ahead and take this timing, front timing belt cover off. This is the bolt to the timing belt cover. Once you get that bolt loose, set it aside. This cover just lifts right off. You grab it with two hands normally and pull it up out of the way that way. Now once the timing belt cover is off, you want to look down in there as far as you can to see if you see any coolant. If you see any coolant down there, you need to stop and get your water pump if you don't have one already. Like I said, I normally change water pumps every other chain. Okay, now that the serpentine belt pulley's out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and line up the timing. I got a notch right here. I got a notch right here. And then I got to find the timing marks, the notches on the cams. I see one way over here. So this motor's got to be cranked clockwise over to align the timing. And to uh, align the timing, I have to peel this splash panel back. So I'm going to take this little hand screw loose here. Set that down out of the way. Then I peel this back. And I have access to my crank bolt. And I'm going to put a socket on that crank bolt and turn that thing clockwise until my time is lined up. Okay, I got my 30 millimeter socket and some half fist extensions out here on this crank bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it clockwise until I get the timing marks lined up. Then I'll show you the lined up timing marks. With this area open, it's a good time to check some of your suspension parts and that front motor mount. As you can see, that motor mount looks pretty new and it's not sagging, it's in good shape. Uh, you can check your brake lines. As you can see, this brake line is cracked, so they need to be replaced soon. And then you can look at your boots, make sure they look good. And uh, you also have your uh, end links for your sway bar. These look good. And then the boots on the uh, control bar then ends look good as well. And you can shake the wheel around to see if the control arm is any good. And you can look down there to see if you see any damage on the ball joint uh, connection there. Also, you can see the brake pads. And as you see on this one, it has real good meat on the brake pads. So that should be fine for a while. Now that I have this panel pulled back, I want to take a double check there. As you can see, that is the uh, tensioner bolts 
and you want to look down there see if you see any coolant if you see coolant you'll definitely want to replace that water pump but I don't see any here okay I got the timing marks lined up here as you can see there's a notch in that cam it's lined up with the notch in the cover notch in that top cover notch there I don't know if I'll be able to see the marks on the crank but let's go down there and see it looks like I got a yeah I can see them on the crank I got two notches on top of the crank and I got the mark on the oil pump in between them so you got a good view of the mark on the oil pump and then the two marks on the crank and the oil pump is pointing between them so what I'm probably going to do now is go ahead for ease and future reference even though those marks are pretty clear I'm gonna put a little white out on them to make them stand out a little better so I got some white marks on the uh, camshaft pulleys now to make the timing marks a little more visible one thing I did notice, and I don't think anybody ever mentions, is if you look at the crank pulley, the crank pulley has a couple of notches there, and that seems to line up with the belt, but, you know, that's not a, a good mark for the timing, but that could be a quick reference for you as well. And, of course, you can always mark that crank pulley if you, if you need to. And if you look down here, the crank pulley has a couple of dimples. One dimple is pointing straight down toward that bolt. So that can remind you where that timing mark is down there when you're cranking it around after you test your uh, timing marks. So I just laid the coolant bottle over top of the motor and out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do, because it's almost impossible to get this timing belt off and on with this uh, timing belt cover on, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two 10 millimeter bolts to remove this top timing belt cover. In order to get this top cover off, you're also going to have to remove this T25, that's a fuel line bracket. And then that whole bracket will come off along with the top of the timing belt cover. Go ahead and remove the uh, spark plug cover you'll need to have that off in order to get the front timing belt cover off and it has a 6T30 torque screw. I'm not going to use the cam holding tool I'm just going to make sure these cams are lined up uh, when I put everything back together sometimes these things do turn a little bit so you got to be careful um, uh, next thing I'm going to do as since I got this uh, top cover off I'm going to take the bolts out of the uh, hydraulic tensioner so that it takes the slack off the bolts, off the belt. So there's one bolt there on that tensioner and the other one's right there. There are two 12 millimeter bolts. I'm going to go ahead and take them loose. Next thing you need to do, it's a little bit hard to reach, but if you look to the forward side of your crank, you got this 10 millimeter bolt here. 10 millimeter bolt there and those bolts cover the bottom of the timing belt and the dampener down there and that cover has to be removed so get a small quarter inch 10 millimeter ratchet or box and wrench and get those two bolts out and pull that cover down all right now that that dampener covers off you can see this uh, little pin there that's a dampener and your timing belt slips over that and there's not much room to slide the timing belt past this thing to get it on the crank so some people pull a harmonic balancer I do not now I got the tensioner off the dampener cover off I'm gonna go ahead and cut the timing belt and pull the timing belt out okay I cut the timing belt off so now I'm just going to gently jerk it and let it bounce over the cam. I don't want to turn the cam while I'm doing that. So I'm just going to feed it down through there. 
until it comes all the way out from under the can. You can see the tensioner roller there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take T45, put it in this tensioner roller, and be real, real careful when taking that tensioner roller out. It's best to do that with a breaker bar. You don't want to strip that T45. Easy to strip. And it's the only thing holding that uh, tensioner roller on there. So that's my next step. Not sure if you see this timing belt, but it's at about 75, almost 80,000 miles. And when you bend it, it has cracks in it. So you don't want this belt to snap. It'll destroy the head on the car. Bust a lot of valves and stuff because this is an interference motor. As I mentioned before, you want to use a good uh, torque when you're trying to take this tensioner roller out. This is a Lyle. And I didn't notice it till just now, but this thing is a little worn. So this is definitely the last time I'll try to use this one. And I'm not sure if these tools have a lifetime warranty, but you want to get have one that has a good bite in it and it'll get deep in that uh, tensioner roller bolt and turn it out slow because you do not want to strip that bolt. Okay, round three on these uh, torque bits. I started to use those ones, those door last ones I got from AutoZone, and I felt it's trying to strip that uh, tensioner bolt, so I had to go get the ones that I know will work good. So here they are. I'm going to go ahead and take that tensioner out for the third time. Now that the timing belt's out of the way, if you're going to do the water pump, you need to drain the radiator and uh, you could drain the block if you want, put a drip pan under there, and remove those bolts on the water pump. I think there might be seven bolts on it. When you put a new one on, you make sure you clean the surface off real good. You put the uh, gasket in there. If you have some blue RTV, you might use that to hold the gasket in place till you get the bolt started. Some people actually put a little RTV on the bolt shanks to help seal them off too. Uh, you torque those down in a star pattern uh, to get that pump on. But like I said, you want to make sure you get the block uh, real clean. And don't scrape it with a uh, razor blade because that could nick it and cause leaks in the future. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. Go ahead and subscribe to my page so you will get notification of future videos that I post. You can feel free to visit my website, robertspano.com, post questions, and thanks again for watching.